Millionaire businessman George Miller found himself en route from Florida to Canada to visit his persistent mother, Olivia Miller. For days, she had been bombarding him with incessant messages and calls, guilt-tripping him for his neglect and failure to visit her over the past few months. George, a successful textile merchant in Florida, was unable to refuse his mother's requests. He reluctantly promised her that he would return home the following weekend. However, instead of flying back, he opted to take a road trip to buy himself some time to contemplate how to navigate his mother's relentless push for him to get married, a fixation that had gripped her recently. Georgie. She had insisted during a call the previous week. You have everything a woman could desire. Why haven't you found a partner and settled down? If it's too much trouble, I can help you find someone. Mom? George had trailed off on the call, unable to find the right words. I'm extremely busy with work right now, and after. Busy? You have your whole life ahead of you for those things. Do you understand? She had interrupted. You're coming home this weekend, and we'll consult with a marriage proposal agent. Mrs. Lawson, our neighbor, mentioned a matchmaker who could find you a suitable partner in no time. All right, Mom, George had acquiesced with a sigh. If you think it's best, I'll consider it. He disconnected the call, not harboring any immediate plans for marriage, but unwilling to deny his mother's request, especially given her loneliness following his stepfather's passing. As he embarked on his journey, George was engrossed in his thoughts, contemplating the upcoming ordeal. However, his attention was abruptly diverted when he noticed a commotion near a parked bus. Passengers were being herded like cattle, with bodies pressed uncomfortably close and burly men shoving their way through the crowd. George was initially tempted to continue driving, but a glance in his rearview mirror compelled him to stop. A distressed woman, clutching a baby in her arms, was pleading for assistance. She begged the bus driver to allow her entry, but he callously disregarded her belongings and drove away, leaving her sobbing helplessly. George felt an inexplicable urge to help and couldn't stand by as she suffered. Swiftly reversing his car, he pulled up in front of her and rolled down his window. Excuse me, may I help you? He asked. The woman, clearly frightened, clung tightly to her baby and regarded him with trepidation. Her clothing was worn, and her face bore the marks of hardship, though she didn't seem very old. Don't worry, George reassured her gently. I won't harm you or your child. I just want to assist. After a moment of contemplation, she looked at him and inquired, could you please give us a ride to the city? My baby and I have nowhere to go. Of course, George replied with a friendly smile. Please get in. He helped her load her belongings into his car and opened the door for her. She settled into the front seat, cradling her baby, and introduced herself. I'm Lily, and this is Amelia, my daughter. Thank you for helping us. George couldn't help but be struck by Lily's beauty, despite her destitute circumstances. He had never felt such a deep connection to someone as he did with Lily. You're welcome, Lily, he said warmly. Your daughter is adorable, and she has a lovely name. Lily's lips curled into a smile, but it quickly transformed into tears. She resembles her father so much. If only he were with us today, we wouldn't be going through this, she whispered, her grin giving way to sorrow. George contemplated his burgeoning feelings for Lily and pondered a plan. Lily, he began after a pause, if you're willing, I can offer you and Amelia shelter at my mother's house. In return, I have a small favor to ask. Lily turned her gaze towards her child, holding her clothes. She seemed cautious, almost fearful. I don't want any trouble, sir, she said hesitantly. Please stop the car. I shouldn't have trusted you. Lily, please, hear me out, George implored. I don't mean to cause any harm. What I'm proposing is that you pretend to be my fiancé in front of my mother, nothing more. What? Lily's eyes widened in astonishment. Your fiancé? Yes, George affirmed. My mother is desperate for me to get married, and all I need is for you to act as my fiancé in her presence. Can you do that for me? 
I promise to provide you and Amelia with the best accommodations, and you won't want for anything. After a moment's hesitation, Lily nodded in agreement, recognizing that she was alone, homeless, and responsible for her one-year-old daughter. Little did she know, her agreement would lead to an unexpected revelation at George's house. You? What are you doing here? Mrs. Miller exclaimed upon seeing Lily. Mom, what's going on? Do you know Lily? I ran into her on the way, and she needed help. So, Georgie. Mrs. Miller trembled. She, she is Max's wife. Lily, I know her. George couldn't believe his ears. He turned to Lily, who was now in tears. I'm sorry I declined your help, Mrs. Miller. I, I thought I could manage Amelia and me on my own, but I, I was wrong. It's all right, dear, Mrs. Miller said, embracing Lily. Come inside. I advised you to accept my assistance, but young people these days. Mrs. Miller welcomed Lily into her home, served tea and cookies, and cradled Amelia in her arms. Mom, what's happening? George inquired. I don't understand. What happened with Max? And why is Lily here with Amelia? Oh, my dear Georgie. Mrs. Miller sighed. Everything changed when Lily became pregnant a year ago. Max divorced her and left. I always knew that boy was no good from the moment he entered our lives. I offered Lily a place to stay, but she insisted on forging her own path for her and her child. Now that I see them, I regret not being more insistent. George was dumbfounded. He hadn't heard from his estranged stepbrother Max in years. In fact, Max hadn't even invited him to the wedding because they had never gotten along. Learning of Max's mistreatment of Lily only intensified his disdain for him. I'm sorry your plan didn't work out, George, Lily whispered as Mrs. Miller took Amelia to her room. I wish I could have been of more help, but George hugged Lily tightly and said, Lily, I'm just relieved that you and Amelia are safe. That's all that matters to me. Lily was taken aback by his compassionate response, but she had also started to feel something for George, primarily because of his kindness and willingness to assist. She embraced him back and expressed her gratitude. Noticing the growing affection between the 